is your feeling of this word innovation? I believe everybody thinks the same. Innovation, the word itself, already sounds pretty fast, pretty new, and it's even newer than new. But actually, there are new challenges of innovation. Our next panel discussion has a topic, the new challenge of innovation. Super corporate meets startup with next big idea. Just like any of us, any established enterprise needs to constantly grow and be inspired. That is why interaction or even collaboration with outside new forces can be very beneficial for both sides. Today, leaders from enterprises are here to tell us how they look at the interaction between them and the new forces outside. And now let me introduce our moderators and panelists, starting from our moderator of this panel. Our moderator is the deputy CEO of Taiwan Rapid Innovation Prototyping League for Entrepreneur. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Louis Chen. Welcome doctor, please take your seat. And now our panelists, General Manager of B Oak Business Unit from Acer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Robert Wong. And our next guest is Audience Evangelism Manager of Developer Experience and Evangelism Microsoft. Please welcome Mr. Michael Ho. And we're also joined by the Business Development Director of Cisco. Please welcome Mr. Andy Lee. It's time for our moderator, Dr. Chan. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is our honor to, be, to meet you at here. Well, I'm Louis Chen. I uh, also uh, am the uh, COO of E3CIS, especially in charge all of the uh, spin-off and spin-in projects at e -trees. Today's our panel topic is the SuperCorp Maths startups. But you know, uh, especially I got to focus on how the SuperCorp contribute to the startups. So that's where we're introduced from the uh, Robert, Robert Wong. I was the GM of our Acer BYOC. Let's move to him to see what I got to talk. Thank you. So, um should I start introduce uh, start by introducing myself uh, within five minutes and then followed by yes. other two speakers? Yes, okay. Yes, 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 okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, I uh, hello everybody. Uh, should I sit or stand? This is okay, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we take it easy. Right? Thank you. So, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Wan. Uh, I run the business unit called BYOC, Build Your Own Cloud, uh, at Acer. Uh, BYOC, some people you know, love to make jokes, they say that you know, BYOC also stands for bring your own cash. <laughs> a credit card too. <laughs> so anyway, you know, BYOC is an organization that our founder, Mr. Stanshi, aiming to help this, uh, to turn around this company. Uh, BYOC is the term that uh, invented by uh, Mr. Stanshi. Uh, as I explained earlier, it's short for build your own cloud. Because we believe no matter you know, consumer or commercial uh, corporates, uh, you know, instead of leveraging all these service features in the public cloud uh, from time to time, either consumer or corporates still needs all this critical data back to their hands. A little bit about Acer you know, from the past and current and in the, in the future. So most, as most of people know that we are a you know, well-perceived PC company. Mm. And still, uh, we're running our business uh, with the revenue, uh, mostly about you know, 95 plus percent are coming from all these PC related products. We're shipping about 30 to 40 million units, different type of hardware platforms to the market every year. Uh, that make us still maintain probably number four uh, PC makers in the world. Uh, however, uh, we're actually not stranger in the data service business. 
So if some of you remember, uh, we introduced a service called Mega Micro in year 2001, so 15 years ago. So Mega Micro, uh, before I explain Mega Micro, you know, well, Mega uh, stands for Mega Infrastructure, Micro means microservices. If, I, if we map this concept into the cloud uh, that most of people understand as of today, um, the mega infrastructure is pretty much like the cloud infrastructure up in the air that provides you storage and the computing capabilities. Sure. While the microservices, you know, each of us know that very well, they're even better too, is that all the microservices are like the applications that you have on your mobile devices. So we had that concept by introducing the mega microservices 15 years ago and now uh, reflect on the cloud and apps world is exactly the same. So with that mega microservices notion uh, uh, in mind, we actually build the single largest data center site in Asia Pacific regions and it is still up and running. Uh, I think more than 70% of uh, uh, government data are hosted by our data center. Even the former Premier Zhang Sanzhen was actually managing that data center uh, before he uh, joined uh, the company and therefore the, the, okay. the government, right? So that's where we came from. And now at BYOC as a very strategic element helping this uh, corporate, this company to transform itself, what we're doing is that, um, if I may leverage use the cloud term, right, we're not touching the physical data center portion, the infrastructure part. Uh, we start by building uh, the platform, uh, the pass layer, and therefore uh, SaaS and DAS. So by building pass, we're working closely, not only you know, we have a platform built with the global coverage, but we're also hybriding that by working closely with Microsoft and other uh, PaaS players, and then followed by uh, SaaS players from different verticals. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we'll be able to work out and build solutions on top of the PaaS, and then provide a solution or a complete solution to either consumer or commercial. It, it is quite good that the ASA we saw that it's already built a platform for our entrepreneur, right? Let's work, uh, welcome the uh, Michael to see the, how the Microsoft to bring to us, please. Okay, so hello everyone, I'm Michael from Microsoft. So here today I'm gonna share what Microsoft has become and what we can actually help the entire startup ecosystem. And we frame this as achieving more altogether, just as echoing what uh, Robert had just said, we're actually collaborating with a lot of different partners. Instead of seeing them as clients, we see all of the startups as partners in the entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to show you a little bit about the video of what Microsoft has been doing recently and has been achieving in the sense and in different verticals. So let's watch the video first. What is technology? What can it do? When I lost my eyesight, I thought that my painting days were over. How far can we go? By using your hands, you can actually control your x-ray. Technology has the power to unite us. Hang on, honey. Hang on. There he is. You see him? I can see him. It inspires us. Technology has taken us places we've only dreamed. Now I can do whatever I want. It gives hope to the hopeless. <laughs> and it has given voice to the voiceless. So basically the thing for Microsoft is empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more all together. And what we're doing is actually making technology as easily accessible as much possible for all of the people that we have. And also um, we, what we're seeing, the future will be mobile first and cloud first. So in the sense is that everything will be interconnected through the entire cloud platform. And also we're providing a cloud platform for everyone to use in different verticals in a very easily way as possible. 
So for startups, there's a whole bunch of goodies that we can use. First of all, Microsoft has the largest infrastructure in the world that you can access to the world through any point you want. There's 24 regions currently accessible. So it's more like um, two, two times more than Amazon's computing power and six times more than the Google's computing power altogether. With Microsoft's power that you will be easily leveraging everything altogether to go through the world with Microsoft, with Microsoft's partner like Acer, like Cisco, like a lot of other great partners altogether. So we are building the ecosystem for all of the startups to, to survive, to thrive, and also to shine on the platform altogether. And with the cloud, there's a whole bunch of goodies that we actually buy them in not only just the technology stack, but also the business-wise. So we're connecting the enterprise network, we're connecting the global startup ecosystem, we're connecting all of the investor and investi investing um, institutions to come in to play. So then whenever the, um, all of the partners who are startups joining Microsoft B-Spot program, they will be able to get access to all of the world's resources in the world. So no matter where you're in Taiwan, you're in South Africa, you're in any place in the world, there's always the world view that we see for the entire startup to actually ride with us. So it's sort of like standing with all of the big partners all together, and then we can play the game in a greater mass. So also, we provide everything for the startups to start off. For example, like uh, free resources, free clouds, free download like Windows, Office, and everything, all of the technology. We try to solve all of the technology issues at the very beginning for startups, and then we're combining with them to do the global business all together. So that's basically what Microsoft actually has been achieving nowadays. And what we're thinking is, what is the next step for all of the startups that you wanted to create? And let us help you with the entire ecosystem that we, we are all working together to achieve more as humankind. So that's basically what we can do that's for the startup good. ecosystem here. That's good. Thank that's you. Good. That's good, that's good. Well, that's the next time that we're going to see the ND Lee, Cisco Director from Singapore. What are you going to bring to us? Thank Hi, you. good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, thanks for the invite. And I think for Cisco, let me just give a brief introduction of myself, and you will know where I come from. Uh, I, I have a 17 year career right now. Started with a startup as a service provider. I spent four years in Huawei and the GSM space and I'm back in Cisco right now in the IP arena itself. I've gone through all the technology. I've gone through the verticals as well in service provider, enterprise as well as public sector. Now, the reason why I flash this slide is that in Cisco, we are a technology company. Uh, we always go for architectural drawing. I'm sure a lot of us will, know, will want to know how each of our solution is actually pieced into a total eco solution. So that's what I have here in a very simple architectural drawing. This is how we, do, we have done it for IoT, which is Internet of Things. Notice that our is actually IOE, Internet of Everything. It's actually things plus processes and people. Okay, that's what our, our terms is all about, but no difference, it's the same. Uh, that's where I come from as well, IoT and smart city building. In Cisco context, we have done a lot of IoT projects. We have done numerous of smart city projects as well, in globally as well, together with Microsoft. Uh, in fact, Cisco and Microsoft, we are strong collaborators uh, in the cloud space as well, in the platform as an enabler for all of you. Now, what can Cisco offer for a startup? I, I would like to just share three things. First is that Cisco is a platform enabler, just like a corporate like Microsoft, just like Acer as a corporate. I, I would not term ourselves as super corporate. We are not that super <laughs> after all. Yeah. Uh, about innovation, I think Sophie asked the term innovation. For us, innovation is just new ideas that change your life. That's about all. But whether the innovation can really solve a solution, can really solve a problem, uh, that is something that super corporate will meet the startups to envisage or to plan for it. I think that's a strategy to take. Uh, second point that Cisco can do for a startup is that we have a strong sales force. If the, if the solution is innovative enough, it match a problem. We will have a core innovation solution and we will have an entire sales force to sell for you. Not just the corporate sales force, but our partners as well as distributors, distributors to do that. So, 
that is one uh, other avenue that you can take with us because that will actually reduce the risk that you are facing in, t in the front of client, in the front of tenders. Okay? Third point, last but not least, is Cisco is also an investor by ourselves. Okay? We are a VC company. Uh, we have VC funds. We have VC investments with other VCs as well. Uh, in US, if you notice in the Bay Area, we actually acquire a lot of companies. And it's, the acquisition rate is very high. Every year we acquire a lot of companies. And in fact, some of these companies are also spin-offs from Cisco's business units. So that's how we do all this. And acquisition is in our blood, and in, in our blood itself. You know? And just to announce that in Singapore, we also have a VC fund with Monks Hill that's investing in startups in Singapore as well as startups uh, overseas. So that's what we do for the whole accelerator program and the whole ecosystem of startups. I just want to end what I have here with uh, extract from the IDA Smart Nation. This is actually a Singapore-driven Smart Nation initiative. What I want to emphasize here, the message is clear. Government support is very important if you want to do something. This is an architectural blueprint that is provided by the government themselves. And this is uh, available in the web, so this is not confidential. Now, if a, if a government sets an architecture, then it's easier for all of us, corporates, governments, uh, co uh, companies, as well as startups, to create a solution. That's all for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think these are all of your three super cop. Uh, we already know that you uh, contribute a lot of your resource to build the ecosystem for, for our startups. But I'm also very curious that are there any very clear company policies according to the change of your past currently and also in the future? Is that answers? <laughs> right. Uh, thank you, Louis. So, um, we well, need a super, thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, nowadays we see a lot of innovations that's going to disrupt, well, actually make, life, uh, make the world a better place to live, or going to disrupt the previous generations of technology that are actually coming from the bottom, right? Oh, so we have, uh, you know, startups with high passions, talents, new technologies, great creativities. Uh, by putting all together, you know, startups are generating something. And to further realize that to facilitate... Oops. What does that mean? It does that mean. <laughs> <laughs> we just check whether you are right or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, to further facilitate that, because, you know, the existing corporate got resources that small startup do not have, while startup possess strong creativities, passions, um, it's for all these things that you know we can hardly create in house. So um, we think you know facilitating the two kind of animals working together is very important. <laughs> therefore, right. therefore we have created a program called um, Blue Sky program. So Blue Sky, we're aiming actually leverage our existing in house capabilities or global networks to take all these startups uh, fly to the blue ocean blue sky as a bigger market. And to realize that, we have introduced a program called uh, Blue Sky Program. And then, as, uh, um, put it in a simple way, there are actually three elements inside of a Blue Sky Program, which are A, B, and C, right? So number one is a, 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 the A elements, A is an open platform. Uh, the platform is a hybrid platform, as we, you know, I said, I explained that earlier. You know, we have a platform deployed with the global coverage, and we work closely with other platform providers, right? So as long as um, you know our partners, you know, from uh, startups, solutions can be landed on our on the platforms, we we will therefore you know provide the B elements and C elements, help them to take off. While the B elements is actually a co-marketing program, so. Um, we travel our partners around the world because you know we join all the major computer or telecommunication exhibitions around the world at a regular basis. Uh, for example, we join Computex every year. We join CES, okay. Mobile World okay. Congress, okay. IFA, or you know from time to time some regional exhibitions. So actually, we travel. We, we take all the partner solutions that 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 we collectively 
uh, uh, R&D um, and, and, you know, and a showcase in all the exhibitions that mm -hmm. we go join. So that's the B element. And we also have a logo that allowed our partners to use that, mm -hmm. you know, as long as they feel like they use it and they think that helped add value mm -hmm. uh, in helping them to sell their products, right? So, so that's the co-marketing program. And this, while well, the C elements is actually our global resources connections, uh, as far as uh, as of today, we're selling our products at 160 plus countries with 50 something uh, branch offices uh, plus service capabilities, uh, and we also have a corporate venture. So with all this, uh, we are pulling all this out and laid it down the table on uh, trying to uh, make that become the resources available for our partner startups to leverage. Oh, so right. so that's the three uh, key elements in the Blue Sky program that we're providing aiming to facilitate the, co uh, the co cooperations between our company and then our startup partners. Okay, that's quite good then. As I see the uh, how to Microsoft, are there any clear policies in the futures of Microsoft especially that we could see? Please. So uh, basically uh, for what Microsoft is aiming for the next is what we just shown to empower everyone on the planet, which actually stands for we're using the technology in a good way to actually make the world progress in a faster fashion. Just like what we have shown the video, we have gone to with NASA, we have do a lot of uh, conducting with uh, healthcare, we have done a lot of smart retail, smart house, smart, pretty much everything. That what we are doing is to build the top platform on the cloud where everyone will be accessible to the technology. And then we created this B-Spot program where just as a Blue Sky program that we enhance all of the startups to join the program for free, for sure. And then all, we provide all of the tools necessary to develop the vertical solutions and domain knowledges on the cloud necessary. So for that program, there's two different sides. One on the technology side, because we're a technology company. So what we can provide is actually we provide a whole bunch of different technology stack. Like uh, now we're embracing the entire open source communities, we embrace Linux, we embrace pretty much all of the technology stack you can think of like Java, JavaScript, Python, PHP, or any kind of technology stack you will be able to use with Microsoft Cloud. And then we also dispatch our architect for you to do some architectural reviews and also to help you with your real architects to make your business grow faster on the cloud scenario because you're serving the world, so you need a very, very fast uh, cloud architecture, and also you need to rethink about how to fast scaling the entire business. And then we provide you with a lot of like, different trainings and sessions, as we, you always do. So that's for the technology part. And for the business parts, we also created a whole bunch of different goodies for all of the startups to co-market and also co-sell with Microsoft altogether. Just like uh, Blue Sky or Cisco, we also have very strong sales force in the world. We have over 165 countries and there are a whole bunch of Microsoft teams everywhere in the world. We're looking for the top solution for the top enterprises to use. There are a lot of major enterprises like Fortune 500 companies They will be requesting us for hey, Microsoft, do you know any solution on smart retail? Do you have any solutions on smart manufacturing? Do you have any solutions on even a concert? So on that aspect, we'll be seeking for the solution and passing on the business for the startup company. And then we will help them go to market to join the global competition in the world. And later on, it's a partnership relationship so then we can work there side by side. And then with the technology we provide you, with the business we provide you to the next level. So and all in all, that's basically what B-Spot the entire program is for. And if you are even growing in a much faster fashion, there's a whole bunch of different accelerator programs that uh, collaborates with Microsoft. Like in Taiwan, we have like Garage Plus, we have uh, AppWorks, we have Hardware Chart, TSS, and NCTU Accelerator. There's a whole bunch of these great partners that can help you along the way. And also there are uh, a lot of different venture capitalists that join the game to play. So with the ecosystem, we're partnering up with all of the bigger, major players in the world to help all the startups to achieve to the next level with Microsoft right. together. Okay. Yeah. Okay, please, Stan. Andy? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think I remember what uh, Dr. James Liu has mentioned just now. <laughs> what, what we do and what we don't do. We must be, it is important that we remember what we do and what we don't do. What we don't do, we collaborate with people, with partners. 
it's a very big ecosystem. Uh, Cisco or Microsoft or Acer, we can't do all this ourselves. If we do all this ourselves, we would not have a good solution. <laughs> that's, that's fundamentally what I always remember. And second thing is that I think when, when I look at May itself, the whole US was looking at Cisco's Q3 revenue report to see whether they will actually raise the federal tax. I think that's important because that shows that uh, in this quarter or moving forward this year, Cisco is definitely going to change. Definitely going to change. Okay. And our main focus right now, besides router and switches, which we all know, the main focus of uh, Cisco right now will be on IoT, smart cities, uh, ser uh, servers in the server uh, space itself, together with Microsoft. And last but not least, on security. Now, in security is a very important thing. Every new ideas that we have, people will ask how secure it is. Fundamentally, we must balance between security and operation. If you load too much on security, it's not going to work operationally. Just remember that. And that's something that we always remember. Yep. Mm, that is very good, though. I know that you, uh, all of you provide a lot of the uh, innovation program for our startups, and also you, uh, your corporates got to innovate or got to change, right? But I'm still going to uh, help some of the startups to ask all of you that how could you how do you recruit or how the startups become your official or your organization resource and you how could you bring the business to the startups yes thank you <laughs> yeah there's um this is a big question because uh <laughs> <laughs> tough <'cause>, right <laughs> yes this is tough this is tough and you know, don't in, forget there is a record <laughs> answer is tough execution is tougher okay because uh Nowadays, you know, um, I think it is a trend that young generation are encouraged to, you know, either spontaneously or by family members or even by, you know, from time to time the government, right, I to see. run their own business. And I we see. love that. And then, therefore, uh, the problem happened is that there are too many startups. <laughs> there are too many. And, and then the startups are from time to time, you know, uh, you know uh, competing with each other or come out of the product with similar technologies or ideas whatsoever. Uh, it's very understandable. Yeah. However, you know, to deal with so many um, uh, startups and companies, we, we probably need to have uh, some mechanism, right? So as to uh, identify the most uh, suitable several. Uh, for those who are not picking up, it doesn't mean that they're not doing good, but you know, we got our corporate strategies, we got our directions, we got the areas that we love to, you know, uh, develop further, uh, our own capabilities together with the partners. So from time to time, how are we going to match each other as we need to have a certain mechanism? Therefore, I see. what we do is like, uh, uh, in, uh, we do several things, right? Uh, number one, we sponsor uh, competition, we sponsor contest. So there are different type of a contest that um, uh, either you know nonprofit organization will be hosting, some corporate will be hosting, some school or government will be hosting, and then different competitions come with a different theme or requirement, right? So we pick up those who we think that makes sense in terms of a corporate strategy alignment, right? And we go join them. So that's number one thing we do. Number two thing is that we sponsor school projects. Right. Okay. For example, we do some donations from time to time, and by doing donations, we expecting we're expecting certain, you know, maybe R and D returns or uh, you know some project as a return. Right. So people are utilizing the things that we donate. Sometimes we donate partly, you know, uh, money, partly uh, equipment or services. Right. So that's the second area, and third area is that uh, we work closely with accelerators, and then there's a very Word for word quote, accelerator call us, or oh, you guys are accelerators <laughs> for accelerators. Because <laughs> we're doing the business, if we're doing the field up the last mile that accelerator normally don't do, right? Yeah. So they say, oh, you guys are accelerating accelerators, right? So we work together with accelerator, and then each accelerator, they have their process in picking up the team as well. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it helps us to screening teams. So we got several sources. Oh, of course, you know, we got existing 
uh, partners, we got colleagues, and then like myself, I'm running in the field every day, so we got different sources, right? So among all those sources, um, every time when we bump into some suitable ones, we, we go through certain process, uh, let the team discuss, and then, you know, number one thing, of course, you know, we need to talk about the engineering feasibilities. If right, there's no engineering feasibilities, no uh, business okay. will be happening. That's good. And then therefore, once the engineering feasibility evaluation is done, we move into business terms and condition uh, negotiation, discussion is negotiation. Normally, we try to lower the entry barrier as low as possible because we understand very well, you know, startup lack of resources and sometimes experiences. So we don't want to uh, build up a, you know, entry barriers high like that, you know, that, that prevent more people to, to work with us. So in general, that is the, you know, uh, certain ways good, that though. we work okay. with the yeah, uh, startup yeah, yeah, that's communities. Yeah, quite good, that's quite good. Thank you, Zen. And how to Microsoft, are there any uh, internal policy or the uh, mechanism for the startups that could be recruited as your extend resource? Yeah, so uh, this is actually a very huge question. <laughs> and I think Robert had answered it really, really, really brightly. So um, for, the, for, the, for how Microsoft actually sees the entire startup ecosystem and how actually we, we're collaborating with them is that for Microsoft, we're building the platform itself. So basically, underneath each of the verticals, each of the domain knowledges, we have the cloud platform ready there for you. And we, we've obtained all of the uh, certificates, we've obtained all of the um, uh, necessary documents that needed to be done for your business to move onto the cloud for all kinds of different vertical and also all kinds of different domain knowledges. But then, um, vice versa, what we want to ask is, what does a startup actually want to have to leverage a big corporate, corporate like Microsoft, how does how do you want to achieve with us? Because we just like what we said, we had the Beesbot program, we had an accelerator partner, we had uh, Microsoft Ventures accelerator as well. But then also, what do you want from the entire ecosystem? What kind of uh, knowledge, what kind of domain, what kind of vertical that you wanted to build upon with us. We had all kinds of different stretches. We had Microsoft Research conducting a whole bunch of new technology uh, research not necessarily relate to our product itself, but that's like five years or 10 years apart. So what I will suggest is for all of the startup to think about what do you want to get from an enterprise like us? What kind of partners are you wanted to seek from us? and what sort of domain knowledge that you wanted to have. Because you will be knowing more domain knowledge than us. You will be knowing a lot more on your vertical to conduct your business. But then we provide you with all the technology necessary, like the bot framework that we mm. provide, the cognitive services. We have AI, we have all of the uh, computer vision, we have uh, text-to-speech, speech-to-text. We have pretty much everything that you can think of. We make it as a pass service on the cloud already. And there's a whole bunch of data analytics, and not to say IoT, the huge part. We also invested in an IoT innovation center right here in Taiwan. So the question lies back to what would you want to achieve with Microsoft? What would you want to achieve in each vertical and each domain that you wanted to do your business? And how we can help you? Because we are always here, and all of our clients are here. And the question will be uh, lays back to, so, when you're ready, whenever you're ready, come see for us for the bigger game, for the global game here. So that's actually okay. how we see the entire global ecosystem and how we cook the entire Star ecosystem here. Okay, that's good, that's good though. Okay, then Cisco, now traditional Cisco is like a device provider, right? Now is yeah. probably the uh, SI, right? Uh, how could yes. you, yeah. How could you, uh, what is that, bring the business to your partner or buy out them? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think for a start, we, we need to define the word startup. I, I think startup is used very loosely. Uh, I've seen a lot of companies having very good products and maybe have business as well. No? So I, I think startup, I'll term that as companies. Uh, in, in terms of uh, collaboration with Cisco, now Cisco has a developer network that we provide for all the companies to work on. Uh, it's actually open APIs and SDKs that is provided for all companies to work. Now you would have 
uh, innovation, innovation and joint solutions with uh, the network platform, cloud platforms that we provide in terms of switches, in terms of routers, in terms of gateways, in terms of servers, in terms of security. This is pretty much what Cisco does. Now, how does it work with your solution as a joint solution? That is important for go to market. Hmm. Now, uh, I, I think two points here that I want to mention is that we, we talk about solutions. Uh, I remember that we, we, in terms of solution, we should not think of solution before a problem. We must define a problem first. Now, I, I see a lot of problem being self-generated. We are engineers. We, we generate uh, problems from solution. I do that as well. So mm. that is something that I, we, we be mindful as well in, mm. in Cisco. And mm. second point is that in Cisco, fundamentally, we are very much in the ground itself. I deal with tenders. I deal with projects. I have a new tender that's, that just came yesterday. In a tender, in a project, it's a lot of corporates, SI system integrator partners, as well as company, individual companies working together. So there's always opportunity for everyone. Mm. It's how we structure it, mm. like what Michael said. How, what do you want from mm. us? That's important. Yep. Mm. Wow, that's quite, thank you, Zed. We all know the, how could a, uh, the SuperCorp to see the startups and then we got to know that how startups will strengthen themselves, right? Then, as you may know, that Taiwan, and you are very familiar with Taiwan, even you are from the uh, Singapore, right? So, in your point of view, that how could you, what is your expectations of Taiwan and, and what is your suggestions to Taiwan? So, shortly, okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um. It's an interesting question because this reminds me my uh, 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 my my previous uh, previous job. <laughs> so you know, I worked for Intel before, and then Taiwan to companies like Microsoft and Intel in the PC world when we were still running big in the PC big time, right? Taiwan is a very important enabling machine. <laughs> when I say enabling, means. Taiwan industry is taking the technology, right, from companies like Microsoft and Intel, the operating system and the CPUs, productize that, and then take it to the marketplace for globalization, for global scaling, you know, provide it, uh, pro uh, providing all the capabilities with the OEMs, right? So they are Dell, HP, IBM, Lenovo, Acer, Asus, and so on and so forth. And now, so we are at the, at the point of uh, you know, looking back, you know, as a PC world, they're looking forward. It's uh, now you know emerging IoT, big data, and cloud technologies, right? So, in between, what is the role Taiwan is going to play? From my point of view, is that there are still strategic and valuable assets that Taiwan possesses, because in the past 40 years, Taiwan built up relatively a very good ecosystem in terms of, uh, you know, for all those product, uh, go to market and global scaling, right? And in the coming IoT world, uh, we still need certain, you know, hardware, software, and then cloud services, integration efforts before we take, we can take all these integrated solutions to the global market. I think if we look at the, some example that the Kickstarters, uh, some startups, while they, invented, they created their products, they didn't have a good manufacturing background in mind, so a lot of products are not manufacturable. Mm. For products that are not manufacturable, you're limiting your own, your, your, yourselves, the business opportunities in doing a bigger scale of the business, right? So that is a part of uh, expertise that Taiwan ecosystem possesses. And now we see more and more ODMers are also, you know, open their door, willing to take a smaller volume problem, problem with a different variety of products. They're willing to take the trial. We got good prototyping centers, they yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, E-Tree, yeah. uh, you know, uh, or at the, at, the, at, the, at the private sectors, right? So I think moving forward, uh, Taiwan can and will continue leverage uh, its strength that built from the past and then you know, take it as the strategic elements helping the global partners, whether it's big or small, for product globalization continuously. All right, that's good, thank you, Sen. Glo product globalizations. All right, then, Michael? Right, so um, 
Actually, uh, I will be welcome, welcoming all of you to join the session in TICC this afternoon. You will see how important Taiwan to Microsoft. <laughs> we actually had a CVP from the Windows team here. And he's not going to show only Windows 10, but he's going to show some more exciting stuff where I'm not supposed to say it here yet, where you're going to see it this afternoon. So what we see, Taiwan is actually a huge innovation island where we've got the super talents that they're, they're producing in here locally. Like um, Robert, like myself, we're all growing up here. We know that there are so many different talents from Taiwan that are actually doing great business and huge innovations in technology and also in startups. So uh, what we see is that we have invested in so much in the past and now we keep on investing more because we're seeing the need of data scientists, we're seeing the need of the IoT initiative, we're seeing the needs of the new vertical and domain knowledge solution providers from all kinds of different big corporations where they cannot solve by themselves. But in Taiwan, the Taiwanese people, they are super talented and also super uh, ver virgile, agile, sorry, agile. So then we can provide something in a super fast fashion and then we can integrate them all together with all of the solutions that we think of at the sense. And also, what we see is uh, for the content that we provide here is super important. It's not about just the ODM or OEM, the hardware itself, but then the content and also the integration in both. Because we have such a beautiful island where we have so many different places that we can take as a pilot study, and then we can start doing smart cities, building smart retail stores, building smart hospitals right here, just in Taiwan. And all of the people are supporting this environment, and which is very unique in the world. And we are collaborating with MOEA and also the big uh, players in the government as well to invest in the IoT initiatives to uh, strongly move this wave from here. Because what we see is a valuable talent um, asset here that we have. And then later on, we can export all these talents to overseas, to the world, to solve the problem of the world. So here, the only one um, uh, soundbite that I wanted to provide you is that the only limitation will be your imagination. As long as you can imagine it, you can imagine it, you can always achieve it. And there's a whole bunch of technology stack that we're ready, that Acer, that Cisco, that Microsoft, we make it ready for you to start building your own things and then to go to the next level. That's good, that's good, that's good. We'll do it. Thank you. Andy? So my, my view of uh, Taiwan as a foreigner, as an alien, uh, I, I think like what Michael mentioned, uh, innovative and agility. I think this is top super in Taiwan. Whenever we thought of innovation, it's definitely the northern countries. Uh, beg my pardon, but it's more of the northern countries. And Taiwan is one of the top countries that we think of. Uh, I think to, to add to it is that I think in innovation is important, but the government support or policies are also equally important. Uh, there are some countries we are, which are moving in the smart city, but they are actually held back by a lot of government policies uh, to be, to be uh, I would say, officialized uh, in, in, in the aspects itself. Um, I, I think importantly is we must remember that this whole ecosystem of the IoT is not something that one company can do. It's actually a collaboration, an integration of all solutions. All right, and thank you, Zed. I think that uh, today's panel discussions that we are talking about is what are the programs that you provide to the startups and what is your policy to see the startups and also your suggestion to see that the, our startup, whether they could uh, deeply engage to the industries and or to the special fields or to the platform that you all abuse. And they, you, I, I also believe that you are all a multinational company, right? So some of the topic or some of the globalization points that you could probably could deliver from outside to Taiwan to recruit all of our innovation that here, right? So all of these are all what we can have to do and all of these are all they are going to provide to all of our startups right now. So are there any questions that you got to direct point now or ask them? All right, please. So, so, sorry, is that you? Can one of our staff pass the microphone? Yes, yes, yes. Please. Are there any microphone yeah. there? I heard. All right, thank you. I was trying to say what was the most recent project that Acer has invested in or supported? 
Okay. Uh, project. Well, um, we recently invest uh, several companies, and uh, um, instead of a project, actually this is a continuous effort. I mean, we've been looking after potential uh, investing target from time to time, and then actually most of the investments that we've done uh, are coming into the picture with the strategic elements, right? And then the strategic elements are actually coming out from the several directions that under our corporate directions that we're driving, right? So um, we're currently driving several directions that I can share, right? Number one is uh, the home area, right? The smart home. And number two is the, uh, the automotive. Uh, so we got you know, some collaboration with the car industry. And then the third one is uh, uh, health area. So, you know, I, I, I try to be a bit careful uh, saying that in medical, right? I say health. <laughs> so, so in health area, and then the fourth one is communication. Well, the fifth one, the latest that they're adding one is the smart retail solutions. So for companies who are coming up from uh, these several directions, we'll be very interested in looking into that. And then if we be able to facilitate certain cooperations and therefore, you know, our corporate investment team will be looking after that as well. Mm. Thank you. All right. And anyone want to ask something from Microsoft and Cisco? <laughs> okay, then I got to ask how our Taiwan startup could contribute to Singapore small nation. Are you any uh, systematically thinking yeah, yeah. to bring a recruit? Uh, actually, for Singapore Smart Nation Initiative, there's a lot of projects that is coming up and even implemented. Uh, for example, on hand, we have one project that is dealing with IDA uh, in Singapore itself and deploying sensor networks in Singapore. Now, in the Smart City Initiative itself, there's a lot of use cases, a lot of solutions required for example, on people, for example, on infrastructure on the ground, for example, on smart buildings, BMS, our, our typical word name, BMS. Now, there's a lot of solutions. We are nationality agnostics, to be frank. Okay? I can use, uh, we can use actually uh, solutions from all countries. Uh, I was actually even exploring uh, solutions from Korea on lighting control units. So this is very real. We are actually using all these solutions. But it's just, we, we just need to have a good mix and match. I must, I must know you and you must know me to know that these two solutions can work together. And to be frank, the solutions, the pro projects coming up in Singapore is going to be a lot, a lot more than what we are currently doing for the sensor network. And I'm sure we will have opportunities uh, I think IDA I, IPL is also here. It's actually our, we have done a accelerator programs together. In fact, we have selected three startups from Singapore, three startups from Korea. So this, the next round, we will be very much open to startups in all countries. Yep. Right. That is a small nation. Actually, is an SI programs at Singapore, right? Yep. When you get to do the prototyping, please refer to our triple. Taiwan Rapid Innovation Prototyping Leaks for Entrepreneurship. So, very thank you, Zadi, uh, for all of our uh, distinguished guests today. And then uh, we got to think about is uh, how we got to move Taiwan next term. Then we got to help and coordinate a company with the order of the Super Corp because they got to generate their players a marketing force to drive to the innovations of the economy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. So.